This is a frequency chart that shows most of the frequencies used in the U.S. and even shows a little bit of international. Mostly from a U.S. point of view though. This shows the basic light, uh, layout of frequencies and how we divvy things up. This part of the spectrum is that return band I was talking about up to about 50 megahertz. This is what we use for the return. And in cable we have T channels. We used to use these T channels used to be cable channels that we would use just to make use of this band if it was available. Mostly we use this for return though. So we don't really use these T channels so much anymore. It used to be you could uh, transmit on the return uh, like you'd see maybe you grab T8 here and you'd put on an antenna on somebody's roof way in the far side of the system. We actually did this once in the way old days. Put it, to get channel 2 off of somebody's roof antenna because <laughs> he was getting a really good picture on channel 2 and the office kept getting static in their channel 2. This is the days before we had fiber connecting everything. So we set it back on a channel. And then we took that channel off and demodulate it, remodulate it to a higher channel. And that's how we fixed our channel 2 back then. Because now you don't have any space in your return band for luxuries like uh, softball games and stuff like that. You have to get that stuff back some other way because that's all full of digital now. Very compressed. If you look at the top part, you'll see all the things that can possibly interfere with that band. All of those over-the-air services, two-way radios, police, fire, everything. Then we come up to channel 54, a uh, frequency of 54 megahertz where channel 2 starts. And this just shows the channels the old way they used to be. Channel 2, 3, 4. There's a little guard band between channel 4 and 5. Kind of a wasted space. And some of the uh, cable systems actually shift their channels so they all sit together. They don't, some ignore this guard band completely. We have several systems for cable TV lineups. And these are kind of dated too now because it's, digital's changing everything. But we had HRC, harmonically related carriers, where they shifted everything to harmonically related carriers. We have incrementally related carriers, the IRC, which is basically the same thing as this, except I think I take that out. And then we had standard, which leaves that in. Um, then above channel, then you got 5 and 6. Above channel 5 and 6 you got the FM band. And then above the FM band you started what's called super band. Well no you don't either. Yeah you do. That is called super band I believe for channel 7. Oh that's way up here. Channel 7 through 13. So this is all aeronautic and weird stuff. This is what I was talking about before those channels. A, B, and C, heavily used by aeronautics. And these are the first three channels of the uh, mid-band, 14, 15, 16, that the cable operators used to love to use all these mid-band channels. And um, so you you go up to channel 6, then you got FM, and then you go all the way up to channel 14, 15, 16, uh, all the way through, what, 22, which is I, and that's the end of your mid-band channels. Then you go back to your super band over-the-air channels, 7 through 13. And then you're pretty much, well, you're not done with it yet. You're, uh, this space isn't used by the over-the-air TV people at all. But, of course, the cable TV uses all these channels. These are the, I believe this is, are we in the super band or are we in the hyper band already up here? Bam, bam, bam. All these little channels. I guess these would probably be... There's name for all these bands. I don't need to bore you with them. Hyper band, super band, and super ultra hyper band. I'm making that one up. So we got all these channels. And you can see there's also other services that can intrude on these. And of course here's your, some of your ham bands. And then you're finally up to UHF. So cable TV fills all these gaps and just stacks all these channels right next to each other. Bam, bam, bam. So this bottom line on all of these, you can see, are, is the cable lineup more or less. So, and this is a little old map. This is 97. What's happening nowadays is uh, with Doxis and Digital and Quam, they're starting to bond channels together. And I showed you those little gaps between the 6 megahertz spacings on the channels. 
there's little gaps in between the channels. That's going away in a lot of cases where they'll, they'll bond two or three channels together and those gaps are just gone. They'll just fill in the whole thing with digital all the way through, say two, three, four are all bonded together. It'd just be one big flat line. It makes it a little tougher for us. Um, in the old days, you look at a uh, spectrum analyzer and you can see the video, you can see the little audio peaks, you can see the shape of the waveform. When you had uh, CPD, which is, I won't get too deep into it, when you had CPD it would have that shape too though. It would, you would see that, yeah this is the band. CPD is basically like super heterodone. It shifts a bunch of frequencies way up and they interfere. It's more complicated than that, but it's Anyway, you could see that pattern, that video carrier, then the audio carrier, you could, the real distinctive pair, uh, and that's all gone now. More and more cable looks like noise when you look at it on a spectrum analyzer. All the little details you could recognize before, but the gap between the channels, the audio and the video and all that, it's all gone, it's all flat line noise now. They're packing in so much data, you know, the deeper you pack data, the more it resembles noise.